After releasing two arena-based games back-to-back, -back, From Software was ready to get back to making a classic Armored Core game. Except for this game would be a standalone expansion to Nexus, the Armored Core game that changed the most about the core formula without fully dedicating to the arena like Ninebreaker. This meant that From Software had a massive question to answer. How much of Nexus do we keep, and how much do we change? So, how much or how little does Last Raven play like a traditional AC game, and how did it turn out overall? Well, let's talk about it. And before getting too far into the video, I should mention that this is the 11th in a series of videos where I'm playing every Armored Core game for the first time and reviewing them as I go along. And while you don't have to have seen the other videos in order to enjoy this one, you'll be missing a lot of context about my personal journey with these games if you haven't seen them, so I'll have the playlist linked in the description below for those of you that want to go check those out first. But with that out of the way, Armored Core Last Raven is a standalone expansion for Armored Core Nexus, released 10 months after the previous expansion, Ninebreaker, for the PlayStation 2. It revolves around the aftermath of Nexus's amazing ending and sees the player at the center of the conflict that follows it. And starting up a new game, I was immediately greeted by the new menu of Last Raven, and while it isn't the most well-designed in the franchise, I honestly really like it. You get to see your AC sitting in the garage, and there's a small handful of icons on the left-hand side of the screen that you can use to open up their respective submenus. And something that came over from the Nexus UI is the world map being used to select missions, but there are numerous improvements to this menu alone here in Last Raven. First of all, it's not the main part of the UI anymore. Rather, it's been moved to its own submenu for once you're ready to launch a mission. On top of that, they've removed that free moving cursor that you had in Nexus and instead opted for simply snapping to the nearest mission in the direction you push your thumbstick or d-pad. And fully voice acted mission briefings are back, actually giving you proper context for the mission this time as compared to Nexus's bare bones text screens. These three things alone make the map infinitely better than the previous game, but the final change is the biggest one of all. The missions that you choose to accept will actually affect the story now. And I don't mean slight differences along the way while ultimately not affecting the overall plot, I mean it fully changes the trajectory of the rest of the game with every single decision. See, Last Raven features a total of six endings, and when you add in the different paths that the story might take, the hidden parts that you can find on each of these individual missions, and parts being rewarded for taking specific contracts, this quickly becomes the most replayable Armored Core game the franchise has seen up to this point. And ultimately, your decisions will mostly revolve around what factions you side with. At the beginning of the game, there are two major factions at odds with one another. There's the Alliance, which is a giant conglomerate of all the remaining corporations from Nexus, formed in order to handle that whole suicide drone problem from the end of that game. And opposed to them is Vertex, a rebel group of ravens that believe no one organization should hold all the power, and they seek to overthrow the Alliance by launching a massive attack 24 hours after the starting point of the game. This puts a literal timer on the story, one that you will see after completing every single mission, and it puts pressure on you, the player, to make the right decisions to handle the situation. So like I said, you pretty much have to take a side and support one group or the other while also making smaller decisions along the way about what might take priority to achieve your goals. And when it came to approaching this video, I had a big decision to make in regards to how many endings I would get for the sake of this review. There are six full playthroughs of unique content on offer here, yet I have to get these videos out on a weekly basis, meaning I really only ever have like three days, four max to play through these games while handling other work and life responsibilities outside of these videos. So just to have it out there and on the record, I only played through Last Raven once, I didn't want this video to suffer in quality due to being more rushed out than it needed to be, and I hope that simply emphasizing how much playtime you could get out of this game across multiple playthroughs is enough to kind of cover that point. And something that I noticed almost immediately on my first mission was that the heat system changes from Nexus and Ninebreaker have been massively dialed back. The core mechanics haven't changed at all, but the amount of heat generated by your boosters has been brought back to reasonable levels, and honestly, I now feel like we might have hit the sweet spot for this system. I know that I literally just said in the Nexus video that I wasn't sure if the heat system had a place in Armored Core at all, but in Last Raven, the risk of overheating is always there, but now it feels like you can counter it with knowledge of how to build an AC without needing to have a hyper-specific build just to not immediately cook yourself when using your boosters. 
And another thing from Nexus that's somewhat intact, but completely different is the news bulletin system. These have been changed to be a short debrief after a mission that explains how your actions have affected the conflict at hand, and these are great. They accomplish the exact same thing that the news bulletins did in Nexus, but instead of being a general report written for the public, these are specifically written for your Raven to gain an understanding of what they've done and what they should do moving forward. I think this is a great example of taking an existing system and just condensing it down to be more focused without really removing the core purpose. But let's talk about something completely new to Last Raven, the used parts system. Traditionally in Armored Core, you can sell parts back to the shop for the exact price that you bought them for, meaning you always have full freedom to experiment with different builds without needing to worry about being broke by the end of the game. And this central idea of Armored Core is now gone. Instead, once a part has been used, it will drop in value, meaning you'll ultimately lose money from experimenting and realizing that it's not something you really enjoy using. And it should go without saying that I think this is a very negative change. While it makes sense from a traditional game design standpoint, it doesn't work for Armored Core. Like I said before, one of the main pillars of Armored Core's design is freedom and experimentation with your AC builds, and while this change doesn't completely neuter that, it does hold it back far more than it should. And on top of that, there's a new part damage system as well. When in combat, your individual AC parts will take damage of their own outside of your total health, and they can either be dropped down into a damaged state, or even completely broken. If your legs get broken, you can barely move without your boosters. If an arm breaks, you'll lose whatever weapons were attached to it. And if your core breaks, you'll immediately die since the core is what houses an AC's pilot. And if any of your parts break during a mission, you'll need to purchase a replacement from the shop to continue using that part. And while none of my parts ever personally broke during a mission, this further holds back your ability to experiment with different builds, purely because you'll be spending extra chunks of cash just on replacing old damaged parts. But getting back to the campaign, I had heard so much about how overwhelmingly brutal Last Raven could be difficulty-wise. So I went into the game a little nervous, especially since I don't import my saves from previous games or expansions for the sake of these videos. But honestly, the game eases you into the difficulty very well. I don't think I even failed a single mission until I was almost halfway through the game, meaning that for me personally, this was about an average level of challenge for an AC game. But then, I realized abruptly that FromSoft had lured me into a false sense of security before deciding to drop a massive bomb on me. I went into this mission expecting another relatively easy job. It started with me just moving through these tight hallways guarded by small robots with flamethrowers. Typical From Software trolling, slightly frustrating, but nothing crazy. Then, on my way to extraction after the job was complete, they threw an AC at me that I wasn't ready for, and I died pretty quickly. Nothing we haven't seen in these games previously though, so I give it a few more tries, and eventually I managed to clear the mission and beat the AC in one go. And then after that, while leaving the facility, I see this. A completely new boss, introduced after I had used up pretty much all of my ammo and almost all of my armor points throughout the mission. These bosses are called Pulverizers, and with the story path that I went down, this was the first one that I encountered, but they became a common occurrence beyond this point. And this boss alone took me almost an hour and a half and like three different AC builds to finally beat. The Armored Core games have had missions like this before that are a bit of an endurance match, just testing if you can really hold up near-perfect performance throughout the entirety of like a 10 minute run, but this is easily the most intense one that I have ever seen. And this mission was my wake-up call, that Last Raven was, in fact, as hard as everyone had warned me that it would be. But weirdly contrasting this, there's the arena. And surprisingly, Last Raven actually returns to a more traditional Armored Core arena, having a ladder of 30 opponents for you to defeat one at a time and slowly move your way up the ranks. 
Of course, if you've seen the previous couple of videos, you know that I find this to be a great change, but there is a new addition that threw me off a little bit. Here in Last Raven, you need to offer a bet in order to compete in the arena, and if you lose the battle, you'll lose those credits that you had put up for the fight. So say that you're getting pretty high up on the arena, and the matches have a payout of like 400,000 credits, you're probably going to have to pay about 200,000 even just to get one chance at that fight. And normally, I think that this system would really bother me, but I found Last Raven's arena disappointingly easy. There were a couple of road bumps along the way, but as soon as I would learn what I was missing to defeat that opponent, I would quickly be on to the next one, and normally there would be like a 5 match win streak or so between every single defeat I would suffer. And it's funny, because a ton of these opponents have human plus, when that's just not something that the player can access on their first run of the game. So you'll be fighting against opponents that are objectively more powerful than you, yet they're incredibly easy to defeat 9 times out of 10. And while I'm talking the arena, there are reused maps everywhere in this game. It is most noticeable in the arena, in which every single map is reused from games between Silent Line and Ninebreaker up until the last few opponents actually get their own new and unique maps to themselves. But the map reuse actually carries across to the missions a bit too, with the player returning to locations from Nexus from time to time. I will say that it was much less common in the campaign, but I would definitely say that I spent a good 10-15% to of my runtime playing on maps that I had seen in previous games. And just because the arena was easy, that of course doesn't mean that it's Ninebreaker was. This is Demon, and he was definitely tough enough to stand as a Ninebreaker of the series. He has an incredibly fast build, incredibly high damage per second weapons, and he is insanely aggressive, pretty much constantly flying circles around you while melting your AC. But if there's one thing that the arena and the pulverizer bosses taught me in this game, it's that speed and mobility is king in Last Raven. Not that it wasn't in previous Armored Core games, but it definitely feels the most important here out of all the games so far. So I built the fastest AC that I could and slowly worked through Demon's AP from a distance until I had finally defeated him. And while he didn't give me as much trouble as other Ninebreakers like Ares or Ace, I would say that he's just as tough, if not more so, than those Ninebreakers, because I feel like I won this battle more from a knowledge advantage rather than overcoming him purely with my own skill at the game. But back to the campaign, ultimately I ended up not taking a side with either of the main factions. I would do some work with Alliance to hurt Vertex, and then flip sides to make sure that neither of them were ever fully in control at any point. But by the time that the Pulverizers appeared, they became the main priority for just about everyone in the story. These were strange weapons that no one knew the origin of, and that were killing Ravens left and right. And I mean that, because by the time that I was going into the last mission of my playthrough, the only Ravens left were Jacko, the leader of Vertex, Zenaida, an independent mercenary and one of the strongest Ravens out there, and myself. So the three of us, the only remaining ravens in the world at this point in the story, went to try to destroy the origin point of the pulverizers together with one last attack. And by the time that I got there, Jacko was already dead, killed by an aerial pulverizer. I battled it, fully believing that it was the final boss, and was disappointed with how easily it went down. But afterwards, I went to rendezvous with Zenaida and found her battling another, much larger aerial pulverizer before also getting killed. And then it was just me, the last raven. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! I died to this thing over and over and over because I didn't have the ammo for my best weapons and my AP was only about half of what it normally would be. So instead of loading the checkpoint to fight the boss over and over again, I started the mission over entirely to get a better start, and I ended up beating the ultimate pulverizer on my first try of doing this just because of that higher amount of health that I had to work with. And it was weirdly bittersweet, because while I had defeated the boss and saved the world, I was also the only raven to survive the events of those 24 hours. Overall, in case you couldn't already tell, I thoroughly enjoyed Last Raven. Seeing how my decisions changed the trajectory of the game, playing through the best arena of Gen 3.5, overcoming the difficulty that this game threw at me, and getting some really fun stories from the whole journey to boot. And keep in mind that even with everything I covered in this video, I still only got to play about 31% of the game's total content for it. 
It was also the last Armored Core game made for the PlayStation 2, and in case you haven't already noticed, we've been playing every single one of these games on PS2 since all the way back in Armored Core 2. So this brings the longest chapter of the franchise to a close, and what a way to go out, man. So overall, I'm going to be giving Armored Core Last Raven an 8.1. But what do you guys think? Those of you that have played the game, those of you learning about it for the first time through this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, a comment, a subscription, anything to let me and the algorithm know that you did enjoy. It helps me out a lot, so I'd really appreciate it. And for those of you that have been with me for the whole Armored Core journey so far, listen up because I've got something special for you guys. This is the 11th out of 16 videos in the Armored Core review series, meaning we only have five videos left after this one. And I've been planning ahead to figure out what we're going to be doing after the Armored Core videos. So in the comments of this video, I'm going to be pinning a poll to go and vote on the next game franchise or series that we do a review series for. So if you've enjoyed these videos and you've been here consistently throughout them, I would love to get some feedback from you guys on what you would like to see me cover after this. So if you're interested in sharing that output, feel free to go to the poll in the comments below and check the box next to any game series that you would like to see next. You're allowed to vote for as many as you would like, so seriously, don't just pick your one favorite idea. Check every single one that you think you would enjoy videos of. And hey, for those of you that haven't seen the rest of my Armored Core videos, if you enjoyed this one and you got this far, then I'm sure that you'll enjoy the rest of them. So I'll have the full playlist linked right here on screen.